Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. So in this one, we're jumping back into 3ds Max. We're just going to take a look at how to set up a bevel shader, um, primarily for viz work. So what we'll do is I'll import a model of mine. So I'll do the MK4 flare gun. I'll leave a link in the description to the finished uh, weapon here. So you can you get to look at the, the final result. So typically this is what your CAD model is going to look like when you bring it in. It might be triangulated as well. So I've qualified this one in uh, plasticity. So it, it, it looks a little bit cleaner than, than what they tend to look like. So again, you know, you've got to you've got to experiment with the with the export settings and stuff. Maybe I'll do a video on that in the future. So what we'll do, I'll just scale this up as well uh, a little bit. So you, you you'd get your model you bring it in now typically with the hard surface stuff what you're going to want to do is chamfer the edges but what's going to happen is let's grab maybe one of these pieces here uh i'll grab actually i'll try and grab a smaller piece mm, i think this one will work so let's hide on selection uh hide uh, the the other parts will isolate the view so say we've got a piece like this what we're going to want to do um for rendering is typically you chamfer this so uh let's just convert it to an editable poly and then we we'd come in here and you'd add your manual chamfers now the problem is with the CAD models you can't get away with chamfering these for the the rounded edges inside the render and the reason for that is because often too often or not these even with it really crunched down i'm going to show you here look it's still creating issues here still got quite quite a few issues the reason for that is because of the way the mesh is actually built so remember in in sort of cad workflows and hard surface workflows these are constructed based upon uh, your nerves or splines and the mesh is slightly different so even though i've, I've quantified this to the best of my ability there's still uh, quite a lot of tries and you know brought it out with tries and um, you know plasticity does do a good job with quad quad export and you can get good meshes out but for the purposes of this video you know i wanted it um triangulated so often you know often this is what your mesh is going to look like and you get a lot of these squiggly tries now again when when using chamfer modifiers that makes it extremely difficult to to actually chamfer the, all the edges um, and get a smooth smooth sort of result and even if you come through and you know you decide that you want to try and click uh, a lot of these edges you'll see you can't actually loop the selection uh, because it has split split verts here on the try so you can see that all right so what we're going to want to do is is uh, for your concepting and the early stage of the, the design process. So before you get to free top, or perhaps maybe this is your final stage. You know, you've done a model, all you're, design, all you're doing is doing the viz work for the model. So this might be your final stage. So what we want to do is we want to apply a, um, a bevel to this without actually the need for modifying the geometry. So we're trying to speed up that workflow so we can increase the, the, the visuals on it. And you can actually bake from it as well, which is pretty cool. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit M on the keyboard. So that's uh, the M key, there we go. So it should bring up my material editor. And then what I can do in here is look for a standard surface material. So we just grab that and I can drag and drop this on my selection. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this on here. I'm gonna assign to selection. My computer might be running a bit slow because I'm recording as well at the same time. Um, okay, so with that on there, if we jump into, let's just pop a light in here. So we'll do an Arnold light, grab that, pop it in the scene. We'll just change this to a skylight. So try not to go too much into lighting with this one because you know it's not it's not a lighting tutorial as such. So let's just do a quick lighting setup, um, HDRI, and we'll just use uh, Winter Lake. I think that one will be okay. So we'll just use a, a Winter Lake setup there, and let's have a look in the uh, Arnold preview here. So we can just do a very quick quick sort of render. Uh, here so there we go we've got a got a nice render view of of the model here now again with this with hard surface models too often or not you're not you're not going to want these hard edges okay so we're going to want to smooth these out a little bit um, and add uh, that little bit more detail and sort of finishing to your your renders especially for pieces like this as well which are you know it's quite a high highly detailed piece here. So you know it's really important that you you know you get those renders right um, what we'll do is we'll just put 
pop that. Whoops, not on high quality. Cut it back to standard. Let's go back to performance view. Uh, exit that. There we go. So what we can do is there's an actual node in here. Once upon a time, you'd have to set this up yourself. But um, what we can do is use the rounded corners node and we should be able to plug that into the normals here um, and you get some options here to, with the in regards to the radius so we'll put this up to uh, 0.5 just so we can see it clearly and then you've got some um, uh, sections here where you've got um, you know inclusion and stuff which we'll, we'll have a look at so with with that on now if we jump back into active shader mode what you will see is the edges have now been rounded without actually the need for a chamfer or that modification of the topology. So again, if you come in from the Viz uh, point of view, the Viz uh, work, this is a fantastic way of creating that extra detail without having to worry too much. Now, given as is on uh, quite strong at the minute, so some of these are, are, are looking quite, quite large. So let's just turn this to like two. Uh, perhaps maybe uh, hide selection there so we can see the inner parts on here and you can see there we're getting some really nice edges if we unplug this so let's just unplug it you'll see the difference there so you can see sort of these hard edges yeah the model still looks good but it hasn't got that clean sort of finish and that high quality finish that you're going to want to get for your final renders especially like your portfolio pieces and stuff as well so again just adding that shader in you can sort of see the difference you can come through in here now and you know you've got all the settings in here to to create sort of custom material so again you know perhaps maybe you want this to be you know real metallic there so you've got really nice metallic material some of these are, are low here that in terms of the the, the uh, res uh, the mesh res but again you know you can see that and you can experiment with this as well so again you've got the radius here and you know we can we can crank that down a little bit more perhaps you can create um multiple materials so i've just dragged this one on on the entire parts here but you can actually create like multiple materials drag them on uh, and things as well so that's pretty good so let's uh, hide selection there as well just so we can see the full sort of inner workings there so that's really really nice and again if we were to unplug it let's just unplug that and go to the render and again you can see it just looks a little bit more flatter so it depends on what you're going for inside of the render and your final product for me is a fantastic way of just creating that that sort of quick quick sort of detail and that quick chamfer effect and you can actually bake this down as well it is bakeable into a normal map so if you bring in a model and you've got uvs for it so if you've got a, a low poly and uvs for it you can bake it down and that'll give you the the um sort of edges that you need and then you know you're free to export the maps and stuff but you can see from a quick render there the, the quality on here is real real strong so it's a really good look now one of the problems that you're going to notice straight away is i think if i've left it on i hope i have is between objects it's going to blur um sort of attached objects so what you need to do is what we'll do is i'll show you a demonstration on a, another model so we can just let's just uh yeah we'll we'll hide selection for now and then what we'll do is we'll just grab a cube so let's just bring this out so you can see this on here and then i'll just move it off ever so slightly let's hold shift bring this up yeah we're not too bothered uh, about this uh let's scale that there and then we'll add the shader as well to this here so let's just add shader to these two parts there we go um so what you can do here is we'll increase that that shader just ever so slightly on here you can see these parts are now blurring okay so these are two separate models so if you bring on the the, the wireframe they're not actually uh, connected at all uh, why is my wireframe not working there we go so these are two separate models you can see there the wireframe isn't working at or whatsoever so what uh, uh, not connected at all and again if this was an effect that you wanted you'd have to connect these two models up and then chamfer them either manually or using the modifier and again for your viz work it's all about speed okay we want to get these products out we want to create these red quite quickly for the product design you know to go to the client or whatever it might be even in your portfolio as well and just having that that time scale there just to 
in terms of the merge of these two, it saves time. Now on a complex model like the flare gun that I've just shown, we can actually just uh, click this little option here, which is self occlusion. So we can do that and the parts do not combine. So it's really, really handy. And again, you can create different material sets based upon your desired output. So if you do have two parts here that you want to be combined and then perhaps you have another one, you could just create another material, another standard surface material, apply it and just change the settings for it. So it's really, really cool. Um, there's some additional options as well in terms of radius and stuff. You can plug like curve maps in and things like that. Uh, but we'll keep things simple for this tutorial. Um, yeah, we'll just keep things super simple. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just delete them. Let's uh, unhide all. Come back to our flare gun. Let's just get these off. Let's uh, hide selection. So you can see here where it's looking kind of uh, merge. So we're going to click this one here. And then what we're going to do is I'll just drop that back down to a nice small uh, sort of bevel there and again we're getting some fantastic detail so let's just uh, jump into a large view just so you can appreciate sort of the, the sort of render quality here we'll leave that to buff up a moment and yeah you can sort of see there now with that flare going getting really nice inner working parts this is fantastic and it's something again that you could potentially send to a, a client um, it's something that you can, you know, you could do a render quite quickly and get this into your portfolio um, really nicely. And as I say, you know, if you do have a, a mesh that has a, a UVs, you can bake this down. Um, it should be in rendering and I think bake to texture. So if you come in here, maybe I'll do a, view, a future video on this. You can bake the bevels into the, the model edges and then you're free to export that normal map. So, you know, you can overlay it. You could take it into substance uh, and do a bit more work on the texturing. Um, it does work with texturing. I haven't actually got UVs on here, but it does actually work um, with texture as well. So you can plug textures in um, and it'll still give you that bevel effect. Um, in fact, what we could do is just while I'm on here, I'll give you maybe a quick quick sample um, so that's again maybe if we just go back and bring our cubes back up so I'll just do control Z let's bring our cubes back up here there we go so we've got our cubes there so let's click uh, M on the keyboard again um, and then we'll just do let's do a substance uh, we'll just bring in a substance material let's grab that um, just give it a minute to load. Obviously, my computer's, but you know, probably could do with updating a little bit. It's about four years old now. Um, so let's just bring in a texture, and we'll just do the aircraft metal. I'm not, I'm not going to mess about too much. And again, you know, if you plug that into the diffuse, there you go. You've got the aircraft metal in the diffuse. And what we can do is, you know, if you want the spec in there, you can plug the spec and stuff. Um, you can combine the normal map uh, as well. So we've got the normal map here. So if we do a search for normal map and I do believe it's normal bump so you've got the the actual normal which can go in there and we can pop that in and most of the substances should come with a bump map as well so you can grab that and combine them as well um, I don't think I've got UVs on here um, but you know um, and then you can have a look there so we're getting that that effect still uh, between the two uh, let's just jump in we've got self occlusion off and that should work. So let's just take that back out or remove that. Let's bring on our, in actual fact, did I have that in the right slot? Yeah, 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 I yeah, had that right. So we'll just bring that back onto normal. Let's get rid of that again. Um, and there you go, you've got a, a nice sort of texture there and it's attempting to, to merge between them both. So you can see there where it's blurry in lines. We'll just increase this to make it look a bit, bit clearer. So there you go, you got a really nice sort of bevel and shader there. So pretty cool. Um, we'll get rid of that one. Let's unplug that. Let's just delete those. And again, unhide selection, uh, unhide all, sorry. I can bring this back on. And what we just do is just decrease this back to, I think I had it on point 0.1 wanted. And then, you know, you can hide the selection there and then if we just close that down you can sort of appreciate that sort of render view a little bit more here so that maybe you know we do uh, focus in here 
and then you know you're free to sort of set up a really nice sort of render and again I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to get into lighting too much but yeah you can see the quality there so hopefully you know you can you can sort of appreciate um that there so yeah just a quick tutorial really on on this one um let me know your thoughts on this you know is it something that you've done before is this you know have you are you aware that you could do this is it part of of, of your workflow for hard surface stuff um or how do you go about getting your your sort of bevels you know leave a comment let me know um if you found it interesting and valuable um, yeah, you know, give us a, give us a, a, a shout and and let us know um, you know how you use it or plan to use it. It'd be it'd be great to sort of hear from you uh, in that respect. Put that one back on self occlusion only, and again, there we go. Cleaned it up um, a lot more there. So really good. Um, yeah, so just a quick one there. So we'll finish off about 15 minutes or so. So um, I think that's enough for, for this tutorial. Again, as always, please give me a like, uh, follow and subscribe, leave a comment and I'll see you either in the comments or the next video. I hope you enjoyed the video and it's helped you out. Bye bye for now.